What do you desperately want right now? Hey, I struggled with that too. Get out of your habitual lifestyle and you'll probably find that something. A few years ago I realized I wanted to explore the planet and then started saving up money and preparing. A few months from now I will start traveling the planet until I don't want to anymore. I only realized that because I cycled six weeks across Europe. Try out different stuff and you also might find your something. I feel that I was working a dead end tech support job with not a lot of hobbies or friends. Quit my job, started studying to become an arborist. Seven years later, I'm much happier, much healthier with the physical outdoors job. I found hobbies in climbing and board games, and both have given me more friends and a more active social life. I'd say switching careers and trying to pick up new hobbies is a good way to change your outlook on life. And a trade job is usually fairly quick to get into with a short education and or apprenticeship, and surprisingly well paid considering how much the idea of university equals money society seems to push. And a non-desk job is so much better for the body. It'll bring its own issues with wear and tear. But I'd rather be strong and healthy and have to switch careers when I'm 50 plus than sit in a chair for the rest of my life and never be fit. I'm pulling for you. I was diagnosed with a liver cancer growth 10 years ago. I was lucky in the sense the entire mass was growing off of the end of my liver, and it wasn't growing into it or any other organ. I'm not a drinker either. I had the surgery at Mayo. They cut me open, cut off half my liver to make sure they got it all. And that was it. No need for further chemo. I'm praying that if the results are cancer, you experience the same lucky set of circumstances I did, and even more that you won't have to at all. Honestly, I think I want to start dating again to try and find someone to be with too. Haven't been in a relationship since 2014. I broke up with my last girlfriend because she didn't believe in modern medicine and funnily enough the next year one found out I had brain cancer and she called me while I was going through chemo to tell me I was making a mistake in getting chemo and that I should be seeking out natural methods for treating a tumor the size of a golf ball in my brain. So pretty sure I dodge a bullet there. Since then I've just been recovering and rediscovering my self-confidence again. Surviving cancer can have a weird effect on you and it took me a while to get into a headspace where I felt comfortable letting someone into my world again. But I feel like once the pandemic calms down and we can all socialize normally again, I would really like to try and date again. Today is the day my son gets a park bench in his name. He passed very recently. My beautiful bright bug hunting outdoor loving 8 year old prince is no longer with us. Today in his honor a park bench gets placed. I wanted so badly to go there and bring some of his ashes with his sister. But I just didn't have the gas money. Everything has fallen apart since we lost him but slowly we are building back up. I'm just heartbroken I wanted to be there. Even for some closure ride, it's just that absurd feeling. Love you son. I sometimes think I've failed as a human, because after nearly 28 years of living dot dot I have absolutely no one who wants to call me. This thought consumes me. Edit, for those asking, I'm the one that calls, messages every single time. I check up on people, ask how they're doing, randomly send a box of cupcakes because someone said they weren't feeling okay etc. And when I do all that, I do it sincerely. But sometimes, I just pause and think why doesn't anyone ask me if I'm okay? I don't even remember someone contacting me on their own, without wanting a favor from me. In the past, when I was younger, I used to push such people out of my life thinking it was just not worth it when I'm the only one doing something in a friendship. And then after I kicked them out, I saw it had zero effect on the person, rather they don't even realize I stopped talking. But now, even though it's pretty much the same, I know if I stop talking dot dot I'll end up completely alone. It's difficult to find people once you're out of college and working, or so I feel. Edit 2. I've had a bunch of wonderful and kind strangers fill my inbox asking me if I'm okay. And it has totally made my day. Loads of love to everyone who commented words of assurance on this comment too. Maybe it's a bit lame, cliche to bring up John Meyer in this context, but in his song Why Georgia contains the lyrics, 
four more exits to my apartment but I am tempted to keep the car and drive and leave it all behind. I cannot tell you how many times I have had the completely irrational urge to drive past my house and just go away but that takes money and resources I don't have. To be financially stable from a 32 year old who has lived on his own since 17, there are so many financial traps in the world of credit, taxes, and insurances that without a trusted individual guiding you through the labyrinth you can find yourself in that and fighting uphill battles against organizations who have legal teams that dwarf your resources. For the last five years I've been trying to rectify a tax mistake that apparently is a simple fix yet the two California organizations that have the documentation to allow me to correct the mistake avoided confrontation denied fault and ultimately I had to take them to court to be ordered to send me the documentation I need. Months after the court hearing, I still do not have any of the documents I need to rectify over four years of tax problems where I have not been able to receive tax returns. My financial aid for my credential program has been halted, and because of this my tax status prevented me from receiving any of the stimulus checks that has been distributed to the California citizens. The financial turmoil and the ripple effect this has had on my education, my career as a teacher, and my personal, mental health does not affect government companies at all. After years of filibustering my attempt at regaining control of my life, there is no repercussion for the countless unreturned phone calls or blatant neglect the due process of our hearing. The proceedings were ruled in my favor and the companies went back to ignoring me and I still have to pilot my life knowing I may not be able to afford my next month's worth of living. These years I should be putting a punctuation in my post-grad career and taking the next step into being a special education teacher. But due to all of this I had to step down from my teaching position so that I could fight this issue and make sure I can continue paying my university so I can live out my dream. Information is abundant now. I encourage all teenagers and young adults to do your research and find those wiser adults in your life to give you the rundown on how this crazy financial system we have works so that you never find yourself on the wrong end of a situation. Thanks to anyone who read this whole thing, this is still something that affects me every day and being able to write it all out to you guys temporarily helped. I hope that my story can help others because in a world where money is so important, situation like this can truly make you feel helpless. A fucking pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin is one of my all-time favorite flavors. I wait patiently all year. I don't go all crazy the first day the pumpkin stuff comes back because I don't want to wait three hours in line. It's not that important to me, but I've gone to multiple locations on the same day three times now and all of them are always out of pumpkin. It's almost October. They've been out since August and I still can't get one because they're sold out. I just want some goddamn pumpkin. Add that they weren't sold out today. Yay. Apparent. They're both alive but I've had to go very, very low contact to salvage my mental health after growing up with complete emotional neglect. I'm autistic and sometimes I really could use some help in making big decisions. I'm finally stable enough mentally and financially and I could start a new working education path, but I'm too worn between some options and a parent would be really nice to talk to right now. I want COVID to end, not because I want to go to restaurants, or visit different countries, or go to concerts. I see COVID every day. My patients are fairly young, 2050 mostly, and they are dying. They are struggling horribly, and it's so painful to watch. They die alone and afraid. I can't do this anymore. When I have days off, I check the obituaries, and I see their names. The sound of the alarms going off haunts me. Then I have patients that aren't as sick, that will walk out of the hospital. They tell me it's all fake. No one is dying. It's all lies. This is right after I took a 20-year-old to the morgue. PPE is hot and uncomfortable. I get that wearing a mask sucks. But some people only have to wear one for maybe an hour while in the store. I have basically a hazmat suit on for 12 hours. Also, I miss my mom. We're both fully vaccinated, 
but being around COVID so much, I can't take the chance of infecting her. COVID would kill her. I'm pretty sure I've got PTSD at this point. Some days are dot 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 darker than others. I'm not sure about the legality of it there you are, but weed puts me the fuck out. My doctor had me on Zopiclone for ages, which worked really well, but I'd been away for work and unable to refill my medication. A guy gave me a pen to try and that shit puts me out for the night. No brain fog in the morning, I don't need several coffees to function, anymore. It's honestly been a game changer for me. No more car troubles. The stress and anxiety have taken an obvious physical toll on me. I've lost weight, lost sleep, developed more lines, wrinkles, more gray hair, gone more bald, almost looks like a monk's tonsure at this point, and my blood pressure is at a steady 160-90 now. I've been chasing gremlins in my current daily driver since April. It started with needing new tires. Fair enough, they were worn starting to dry out when I got the car two years ago and were from three different sets, $750. Then I developed a coolant leak. Fair enough, car is 17 years old and still had the same hoses from the factory. Hoses were fine, clamps had failed, replaced hoses plus did a flush. $200. Late April, early May, car developed some as fire. No fire on sale 3, so I replaced plugs, wires, and coil pack. $300. Car is still misfiring after replacing everything. Towed to a shop for engine diagnostic and IQ reset. $100. Car develops another misfire in late May. Code reader says misfire on sale 3 and 6. Towed to a shop. Find out fuel injectors are shot, as in, burned out, not just dirty. $400. Car dies on me in late mid-July. Can't find anything wrong. Get it towed to the shop. Shop finds two three gallons of water in the tank. $200. Car dies again in mid-August. Water in the tank again. Instruct the shop to go ahead and replace oil. Oil filter. And fuel filter. Purchase new gas cap. $350. Car throws if app codes early September. New purge and then solenoids. Valves, $250. Car develops a strong fuel smell coming from back seat last week. Order new gaskets and lock rings for sending unit and fuel pump, $50. Car dies on me this morning on the way to work. Currently pending, likely to be fuel tank replacement. Tilde dollar one comma oh oh oh. Estimated, don't ever buy Ford, kids. Edit, should be noted. We can't afford a new car right now B. See the chip shortage has driven used car pricing through the roof. Sounds like some people have had good luck with their Fords, and I certainly wish them well going forward. I have not, however, and therefore cannot recommend the automaker based on my experiences. I'm happy for you that you haven't had any issues. The issues I've had with my car, however, have turned me off the automaker permanently. The list above doesn't even go into the other things I've had to have done since I got it in 2019. Transmission flush. Service. The rule I've always heard is either do it regularly or never do it at all. My car's previous owner did it regularly. $600. Alternator replacement $200. Throttle body replacement $500. Thermostat housing replacement $100. Battery replacement $200. I've learned to never say never, but the likelihood of me owning another one is close to zero. If your experience has been different, I certainly hope the run of reliability carries on for as long as you own that vehicle. Man. There's so much right now I'd really want. I'd like to start living on my own, but the cost of living is way too high. My maximum mortgage covers about half a house. But rent would eat up over 60% of my monthly income. Even though I'm in a good place right now, seeing friends and co-workers dating kinda makes me want to do the same. But can't do that without a house since I share a bedroom with two others. Underscore. A working shower would be cool too so I no longer have to hold a tarp with one hand and a shower head with the other. All in all, though, I shouldn't complain. I'd earn a relatively high salary for my age have some savings, and I feel pretty good about myself in general. 
time, or money, I am in college and I have been draining myself stressing over both of those two things because I have so much homework that I don't have enough time in the day to properly enjoy things nor can I afford going out or and doing things because I don't have the funding for personal enjoyment. I wake up, go to my classes and do homework the rest of the night, and any free time I get doesn't even feel like free time because homework has already left me feeling drained and defeated. To be happy, I have absolutely no reason to be sad. Professional I have my dream job. My wife and I have everything we want and do what we like. Debt free outside of house and car payments that we cover easy. Extended family is good, but I feel sad constantly. Days I am home alone I usually just lay down and don't get up until I know she is about to come home so I can clean up and make her dinner. So much is up in the air right now, in the process of closing on our first house after 44 tours and 8 offers put in, so we're a bit irrationally nervous that this will fall through last minute even though it all is going well. My husband will be doubling his duties at his company and receiving quite a large raise, which I don't want to talk to anyone in real life about because he is currently just feeling uncertain about the additional responsibilities but feels like it would be ungrateful seeming to complain to our close friends about what sounds like happy news. We may be able to pay off all our credit card debt within months instead of years, and we can save more money and build better retirement investments. We make enough now that, while it would be great to speed up the debt repayment, we are already chipping at at rates we never have in 15 years. We can order some food out. We no longer have to buy the cheapest items at the grocery store. We can pay our bills every month. Years back there were some times that wasn't the case. We aren't rich by any means but we have enough to meet our needs and have enough to save and have fun too. I just want to see us 6 months from now and make sure he's happy. Because that's the most important thing. I'll be fine. But I just wish I could know he will still have a healthy work, life balance. Weed. Before I get crucified for desperately wanting weed, I live in a recreational illegal state, and getting on medical is such a pain in the ass and has such a limited amount of things that qualify for it. Where I am you can pretty much only get on medical if you have cancer, AIDS, or PTSD. No exceptions. Weed helps me with physical pain and appetite loss from ulcerative colitis. Helps my anxiety and depression. Helps my ADHD symptoms and is my social lubricant of choice because I literally can't drink alcohol because it makes me violently sick. I only get a week or so out of the month where I get to feel like a lot of the bad shit going on with my body and mind is managed. To have the courage to ask out a very close friend of mine, she genuinely makes me happy, and anytime we hang out we always have a great time to the point where we never stop making e through laugh. However, she is on and off with someone she has been with for 4 years, and out of principle I refuse to go after a woman who is already with someone. This is mainly because I wouldn't ever want that to happen to me, so call it paying it forward in a sense. My hesitation is that I want to be respectful of everyone involved directly and indirectly, but when she tells me stories about how he feels more like a roommate, they aren't intimate more than once every couple months and she doesn't even know why he likes her. I just blow up on the inside. I could tell her all the reasons why I am interested in her, why she makes me so happy, and the fact that when her and I go to the bars together, the fucking waitresses and bartenders think we are together based on our bodied languages versus the guy she is actually with. But I also don't want to jeopardize our friendship either. Now I'm just in this nasty cycle internally of whether I should actually tell her how I feel because I work many states away and can be called back at any moment. I've been remote for over a year and a half. Could be a couple months. Could be next year. However, I don't want her to give up her security of the apartment she is living in with her roommates to get away from him so we can be together, only for me to have to go back to our offices and leave her high and dry. I genuinely care for her, and after being single for almost four years, I had a very ugly breakup of a five-year relationship. She is the first person I genuinely am interested in. Even if I went back to the office, I'd find a way to make it work between us. But I'm afraid that may not be fair to her or her kid for that matter, 
not the child of the guy she is on and off with. Hell, I don't even know if she feels the same way towards me. Maybe I'm overthinking things, but even this weekend we watched a movie together called The Wedding Singer and holy shit did that movie feel too close to home with my whole situation with her. I just don't know what to do, but for the first time in a long time, I really think she is someone I want to be with.